Ladies and gentlemen, today is July 12, 2016, and this is the Can't Kill Show, episode 301, where we learn to be better artists. My name is Keenan Lafferty, and today we are going to be jumping back into our joint study session with none other than the good old metal pieces. This is going to be part two of the series. So uh, last week we learned about taking our own reference pictures, such as this ice cream scoop, believe it or not. That is not a magical wizard staff, the end of a magical wizard staff. That is just the end of an ice cream scoop. But we took a picture of it so that way we could study all of the tiny little intricacies that went into creating it. And then we transferred it over to our own blobulous looking shape here. And taught you guys all about that last week. So if you want to go take a look at that, then click that picture right there. But today we are going to be talking about a completely different subject. And that is, well, that's great that we can study things and we can transfer them to like a jelly bean type of shape, right? But what about characters? What about when we want to actually transfer this material rendering to a character? And that is what we're going to be talking about today with, hey, none other than the metal made Mika or ma made of metal. I think that's what I'm going to call her, made of metal. Um, and yes, this is Mika, the maid girl from my DeviantArt, for those of you who have seen the pink haired girl with the knife, right? I decided to send her back in time, back to medieval times where she is now wearing this awesome set of armor. And now we are going to be taking what we learned here and applying it. Can you see some of the similarities that we're going to be putting over there? But uh, I do have a time lapse, so I'll basically be talking you guys through that today, more so than anything. Uh, just kind of, I mean, because it's more so just kind of the... Uh, rather than showing this real time, I think this is actually one of the episodes where you guys will benefit from seeing the time lapse and we can kind of discuss how we went through that. But before we get into today's tutorial, we have a very special place that we need to go and that is of course the lovely lane because you guys are being awesome and submitting your work. So let's go ahead and take a look at it by going to this tiny URL slash cancalfanart and then clicking on this crazy cryptic link called see all. Then it's gonna pull up, oh hey, look at all that amazing art. You guys are so cool. Thank you guys once again for submitting your artwork. And, uh, oh, oh my gosh, is this actually a study? Is this a study? Oh my gosh, wow, this is great. Very good stuff right there. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm totally like um, spacing out looking at my own stuff. And if you couldn't tell, it is late at night. It is late at night. And you might be wondering, Keenan, what were you doing with the rest of the day? I was doing none other than playing Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go, and look, this is my this is my prize possession right here. Tentacruel has always been one of my favorite Pokemons. I'm so happy to say that I'm the proud owner of him today. Picked him up. Strangely enough, I was like walking through the park for like five hours with my girlfriend, and we were getting all kinds of just like regular Pokemon. I'm sure you guys have been playing it. You know, there's like Parises and Rattatas and uh, what's the other one? Um, freaking Caterpie and all that stuff. And then on the way home, on the way home, believe it or not, just alongside the road, a tentacle was just literally on the side. And I was like, oh, I got so excited. So I got that. I'm totally pokied out. It is late at night. It is late at night and I am ready to get this tutorial started. Got, a lot of you guys are probably like, oh my gosh, Pokemon Go, that is such, that is such a mainstream game, right? <laughs> such a mainstream game. I don't play that. I don't partake in Pokemon. But let's go ahead and get into our good old tutorial, okay? Because we've got a lot to cover. We've got a lot to cover, so let's go ahead and switch on over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm more so just gonna take it easy with you guys, and I'm gonna talk you through my process, okay? Because last week we talked about um, the importance of uh, just studying materials, just studying materials, and taking your own photos. And this is one of the first things that I wanna talk about before we actually get into this, because you can see right here, I'm going into, hey, this is something that I wish I would have done with the diva piece, and that is creating thumbnails. So that way I can get an idea of what my actual like pose is gonna be, or like the camera angle, and just get an idea of what the final piece is gonna look like, as opposed to starting with a face and then building off of that. Not that there's anything necessarily wrong with that, but I wanted to go back to my good old, you know, start with the thumbnail, get to that final stage. Um, kind of get an idea of what the final piece is going to look like early on. Okay, so um, one of the first things that I want to tell you guys about, I want to kind of go back one week and talk to you guys about this because I've had some people talk to me, right? Mostly my mentor students, asking me questions or they've been studying materials by looking up pictures on Google. And, uh, you know, they've been studying like metals and crystal and like scales and stuff like that. And while this stuff is good, while it is good to reference pictures with Google, this picture right here that I referenced for the metal, this was taken by me. I actually, that is my actual ice cream scoop and I held it over a lamp 
right? I held it over a lamp and I know exactly where all of the, these lights are coming from, right? Like this is the main light source. And then we have like a reflected light coming from right here. And then these blue lights are from the windows in my room. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because it's very important as you study metals, it's gonna help you a lot to understand what the actual lights are coming from. Because if you pulled this picture up on Google, yeah, you could kind of understand like what the colors of the lights are and how it's affecting the metal, but you don't know exactly what's going on. And that's why I really urge you guys, when you study this stuff, use your smartphones. Everybody's got one of these things. Use your camera or use, uh, use something, right, to take a picture uh, for yourself and study the lights uh, knowing what the setup was, right? Knowing exactly what your light setup was. And that will help you to learn even more about your metals, okay? So anyway, blabbing about that. Uh, I just wanted to throw that out there because I have had a couple questions about that. Um, using Google images versus actual taking pictures for yourself. Okay, so this picture started out, I was gonna draw Mika, obviously, and then I ended up going with the square set up because I've been favoring this a lot more because I've been on Instagram a lot more. And I just really like the way that Instagram just crops it into these nice handy little like squares and like awesome artists like Ilya Kuvshinov, I hope I didn't butcher that name, but Kron Prince, another one of my, he basically inspired the original Mika piece or like that style. And also kind of like this type of style with like the girl and like the square type of frame. Um, I really like his work a lot. So of course I went with this, works well on Instagram. It's just a win-win. Win-wins all around. And so we did the sketch. You guys saw me put together that thumbnail. And now I'm going through, and I'm, now I'm beginning to sculpt my lines into place. And I hope that you guys understand. I mean, there's been many episodes on this, but just in case, this is another, uh, this is another example of how I go about actually refining my sketch. Some people will like to create sketches, lower down the opacity, and start like new layers. I personally like to work all from one layer. Like you can see right here, this layer three, direct your attention down here. This layer three is actually, it's just a duplicate of the original layer, right? The original sketch layer. And I just refine it a little bit, refine it a little bit, duplicate it up, refine a little more, duplicate up. And uh, these uh, earlier layers act as sort of like save states or like history, like way back in, in history. So I can like compare like, where was I about like an hour ago, right? Things that you wouldn't be able to get to with this history bar, right? Because as you can tell, this is filling up mighty fast, filling up very, very quickly. So. Um, it's good to, whenever you're going to make major changes or you want to try something new, just uh, use your duplicate layer hotkey, which is, of course, Control J. Hit Control J, duplicate your layer, and then uh, go crazy with it. And then you can just compare back and forth between the two, right? And that's always a really, really handy tool as I go about refining my sketch, getting everything kind of uh, set up. And uh, I like that. And another thing that I like but also dislike about looking at the time lapses is because sometimes I look at this and I'm like, oh man, I really like the, the face, the way the face looked like right there. And uh, sometimes it'll be different from what the final one looks like. And I get like, you get caught up in like these mind games. And this is another thing that I wanna talk to you guys about is um, kind of getting caught up in this feeling of like, oh man, like the piece was so much better before, but then I like refined it and then I like lost something. And sometimes actually that feeling is not too far off from the truth. Sometimes you can lose stuff from the sketch. Sometimes you can lose the initial feeling that was in your thumbnail. So, which is another really good reason why I like to duplicate my layers up and, uh, and basically compare back to old save states, old save states, making sure that I'm not losing the original character making sure I'm not losing the feeling of the original piece, okay? So we've set up our sketch. We set up our sketch. Uh, basically, we didn't have to sketch lift this one because I kind of did it my usual way where I just work with the opacity and I'm just erasing out. So you want to think of this as like a, um, it's like an animation cell. The black colors or the black lines are, um, they're, they're just there. And everything that is see-through, I'm not painting grays. I'm not, I'm like, I'm not painting whites or painting grays. So that way I can set a color behind it, which is basically this right here, which is our mask. Let me go ahead and show you guys that in the uh, actual PSD here. Let me show you how I went ahead and set that up. Okay, so really what I want you guys to be looking at is right down here in the layers folder, right? Because I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I set these things up. Okay, so if I take away the lines here, you can see that all of my colors and all of my, uh, basically all the shading is dropped in behind it. And if we take away each of these layers here, see this is like metal, metal two, eyes, skin, blood, hair, mask. Okay, and then we get to the mask. Now this is the most important thing because I start with this. I start with this right here. 
And actually it looks more like this, okay? And we'll get into line coloring in just a quick second. I've gone into this many other times. Um, in fact, I wonder if I could point you back to, I mean, there's so many episodes that I could point you back to because we're kind of like bringing it all together. But uh, there's stuff on like line coloring, masking, all that stuff. I can't really think that straight right now, so I'm just gonna kind of show you really quickly here. But if you wanna know more about it, there's been plenty of episodes in the past where you deal with this, okay? So basically what I like to do is I set up my lines in a way so that way it, it's basically see-through. I'm not painting whites, so uh, I'm working with the opacity. If I want to erase lines, uh, I'm actually flipping my stylus around and I'm erasing away things. So that way I get to a point where it's right about here. Then what I'll do is I'll drop in a mask, a character mask. Now this basically allows me to create a silhouette of the character. So then I can then create new layers on top of it, which I will clip back. Now clipping back a layer is basically what creates this arrow right here. And what it does is it basically makes it so it doesn't go out of the lines because you've already set up your silhouette mask. So you can feel free to like uh, paint crazy like shapes like this. See if I unclip it, then the hair, you can see where it has gone out of the line but because it's clipped back, which by the way, you can do by holding alt and clicking between two layers, clips it back a layer, or clips it to the layer previous to it. And you just do that with all the layers, right? So here's the hair, here's the skin, here's the blood, the eyes. And the reason why I separate out each of these layers is because it's nice to be able to work on one at a time. Whereas imagine if this was all flattened down and we were trying to get in there and we were trying to just like paint like each thing one by one. And let's say you wanted to have a nice soft gradient for the skin, right? You go in there and try to create a soft gradient, but then it like does that. And then you're like, oh no, we gotta, gotta like clean that up. Gotta like add that shadow back in. And then after a while, your, your whole drawing just turns into a huge mess and it looks ugly and we don't like it anymore, right? Turn into angry Mika, okay? So that's why I like to separate everything out because then we can go in there and say, hey, let's focus on just rendering out the skin and you can go to the skin layer. And you'll also know that there's this little uh, lock button right here. What that's doing is it's locking the pixels. It's locking the, the mask in a way where it won't overflow onto anything else. Like for instance, if, uh, if I didn't lock this metal one right here, take a look at what happens. When I go into like shade some of this stuff, oh. when I go into shade this stuff, see how it like overflows onto everything else? But if it's locked, then it will stay within the mask that it belongs to. All right, cool. All right, we like that. Uh, but yeah, it just allows you to go in there and play around with a bunch of different things. And you can focus on one material at a time, one material at a time. And um, oh, the other reason why I want to kind of tie in taking your own photos and how it's going to help you with your own, see I can like add in more cast shadows there. See if I want like a darker value there. And I don't have to worry about like painting into the hair or anything. It's like really, really handy. In fact, I really like that. I like that a lot. That looks good. Probably going to keep it like that. Awesome. Okay. So uh, what was the next thing I was going to do? What was I talking about? I totally lost my train of thought. I'm totally pokied out right now. I'm so pokied out right now. Oh man, but I got some good exercise. It's so cool to like go to the park and like see so many people like, like it's kind of sad, like mostly because I am like example number one of like, I would have never gone to this park ever if it wasn't for the fact that there's so many like uh, like pokey stops and like spawn points for the Pokemon. And yet it's so cool to get out there and see so many people, like people are hanging out. People are like talking to each other. People are like getting excited about what team they're on and taking out each other's gyms and stuff. And I'm like totally going on this crazy tangent, but it's awesome. Like it is so cool. Like this game is like so freaking tight. I love it. I don't know how long it'll last. Like even if it only lasts like a few months and then everybody gets bored and you know, goes and you know, uh, bugs off and goes and does something else. You know, it's like, it's so cool to be a part of something like this, something that actually changed the behavior of so many people, right? People are like walking around outside. People are like getting in shape. I, I made a joke. I was like, this is gonna be the app that actually makes America skinny again, right? We're gonna like, there's gonna be like a drop in like child obesity. People are gonna be getting in shape. And it's all because like, I, I feel so silly admitting this, but like I was literally out at like six o'clock like because there was a, like a Charmeleon. There was like a Charmeleon and uh, like somewhere around me. And there's, for those of you who play the game, it's like, it's kind of like set up like this. Let me see if I can actually zoom in together because you guys gotta look at this. Okay, so see, if you look at this, you can uh, take a look at which Pokemon are in your area. <gasps> Whoa, look at that. We got like an Eevee and a Vulpix and, and a Rattata, right? But there was like a, 
there was a Charmeleon. I don't have that one yet. So I literally ran around for like three miles trying to find this thing. And it was, it was like right behind my house, but to get there, you had to like go around this entire like cul-de-sac, go around like this crazy, like freaking dirt path and like run through some guy's backyard to get there. I didn't ever actually find the Charmeleon, but I ended up running like a freaking 5k trying to find the dang thing. And it's just like, it's so funny how everything is like set up and realizing that I probably would have never done that if it weren't for the game. And uh, yeah, I just think it's really cool. All right, so anyway, we're totally tangenting off into uh, Pokemon Go. We need to get back to this. Okay, uh, so back to the desktop. And I am going on vacation. Luckily, I am going on vacation because I am like, I love doing the show. And I, I mean, I'll be back by next Tuesday, but I'm going to, I'm actually going to Colorado to see uh, a really cool symphony that plays nothing but Legend of Zelda music. It's in Denver, Colorado this weekend. So uh, if you're going to that, by the, uh, by the way, if you're out there in Denver, Colorado, then you might see me in the audience. Come up and shake my hand. I'd be happy to meet you. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get back to this. Okay, so now that I've taught you guys all that stuff, you can see me begin to set up my mask. You can see me start setting up my mask one by one. Uh, see, I'm setting up the skin right now. You can see the metal one, metal two. The reason why I separate the metals out into two layers right here is because I tend to really like to do this when there's two materials two of the same material, but one is overlapping the other. And that's really handy because you wanna be able to light one, say you wanna light the side of this. See how I lit the side of this arm piece right here, or this bracer? I don't want that light to overflow onto the metal behind it. So it's kind of something that comes with practice, a little bit with experience, you'll know when the right time is to do it. But uh, that's the reason why I did it here. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue. On to Metal Mika, made of Metal B. Made of Metal B. Okay, so now, for those of you who haven't gone and seen last week's episode, I highly recommend you do it now because we're gonna be basically doing the same thing that we did to create this uh, material over here on the jelly bean, and we're applying it to each of these individual metal pieces on her armor. So what I want you to be looking out for mostly is that we're setting up, oh, I didn't go into this. I, I need to go into this. Um, and Well, I guess I can go into it in just a minute. Well, let's start with the metal. We'll start with the metal and then we'll move on to the skin. But um, we're taking everything that we've learned here by saying, okay, we're gonna set this up in the exact same lighting scheme that we did with the metal here. And we know what the lighting scheme is because we are the ones that took the picture and we can remember what was happening at that time for the most part, right? And uh, it's a lot easier to translate that over, right? So we have our key light here. We have reflected light here. Key light is a fancy way of saying like primary light source or the brightest light. Then you have reflected light. You've got some secondary light sources coming in from a blue kind of window in the background, right? And we're just gonna translate that over, translate everything over right now, okay? And, uh, but we start with our soft gradients, starting with our soft gradients. Then we start going in there and adding in our rim lights, or in this case, it's also our key light key, rim light, whatever. Um, then we're going in there and adding in those blue speculars. Isn't that awesome? And you can start to see the metal right before your eyes taking shape. Isn't that so cool? This actually worked out a lot better than I thought it would because uh, this is actually something that I'm not very good at. This is, a, this is a joint study session for a reason because I'm kind of learning as I'm teaching you guys. And uh, for those of you who have uh, your own, your own uh, techniques and things that you use to study stuff, I highly recommend you share it on the MZ um, or on the Facebook, wherever you'd like. Uh, but MZ is probably the best place to do it. And if you don't know what the heck an MZ is, then I'll tell you in just a moment because we'll be taking a question from the MZ in just a moment uh, as we finish this up. Okay, so um, the next thing, okay, so here's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. The importance of setting up your own pictures and knowing where your light sources are coming from is very important because you're also gonna to wanna to make sure that your light sources are consistent, consistent, okay? And that is meaning mostly like, hey, we've got this blue kind of soft light coming from the front. So we wanna make sure that we have blue soft lights. Look at that, it's consistent because now we have a blue soft light coming from the front and it's lighting the skin in these areas over here. Actually, I think that looked better to use the, the brush. Yeah, it's like lighting this area and this area and also like the hair and see how everything is consistent. Uh, consistent. We have this key light, uh, this really strong rim light. Hey, we're gonna make sure that we're also affecting the hair on the side over here, right? And there should be some affecting this little metal headpiece, but I didn't put it in yet, right? But it's also affecting here and here and here. See how everything is beginning to become consistent. And look, 
um, similar to everything that I've taught you before about lighting, uh, the blue light, wherever we're seeing blue light, those are from basically planes or parts of the metal that are facing at you. That metal part, or that, that part of the metal is reflecting the blue light back into your retinas. So it's easy to say, okay, any part of this metal that has a plane that's facing towards me, right? Um, so imagine if, it's, if it was like a flat plane of a piece of paper, right? If it was facing directly at you, that's where you're gonna see your highlights. That's where you're gonna see your blue highlights. In this case, not all the time, but in this case, because that is the reference that we took and that's the, the, the treatment of the metal that we're putting on here, okay? So look at that. All the pieces that are facing towards you have a little bit of blue in them. Isn't that awesome? Super sweet. Super, super sweet. We like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue with this time lapse. So yes, that's what I wanna tell you guys. It's important to take your own photos that way you can know exactly what's happening with the light, okay? Very important to know what's happening with the light. Make your life so much easier. You'll be happy and your pieces are gonna look so much better because it's consistency. Consistency with your lighting is the most important thing that a lot of people just don't get. They don't, not that they don't get it, but they, they forget about it, right? And I'm example number one because I forget about it all the time too. Um, but yeah, this has helped to really kind of reinforce the importance of that and how nice it can make your piece look once you really start having consistent light sources. And, um, and just this study, just the study of doing the metal and then translating it over. Notice how I don't have like a jelly bean here for the skin necessarily. I could, I, in fact, I will be doing a study later on the skin. But what's interesting is just studying one material, just studying metal has actually taught me a lot of things about the treatment of other materials because other materials have a lot of similar properties to metal. In fact, you could call metal just like a, a highly reflective glossy surface, right? And a lot of different types of materials have a certain amount of gloss to them. So they will kind of react in very similar ways to metal in a lot of cases, or they'll have similarities or properties of metal. All right, and with that, that is going to end the time lapse, and that's gonna take us to where we are right here. So I think that is everything I wanna tell you. That's everything I wanna tell you. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and move into the question catapults.
Oh! Oh!